sad times call for spontaneous projects, but in all seriousness, I've been wanting to make a coding walkthrough series for a while, but I've never had the motivation to start that until I decided to start up a side project. Also, hey, I got some character skills. I was trying to commission some, and it's pretty hectic trying to find someone who actually does them, but when I did, um, yeah, I need to talk about commissions for a second. I've only bought a commission once in person at a convention, but other than that, I'm very unfamiliar with how it all works and the whole pricing system. I'm all for supporting other artists, but $300 for something like this was a bit insane for a full-time student. Like, I draw stuff myself. I understand the effort needed for all this, but I was asking for something like this. No shading and only two poses. One bust of just me standing and one bust of the same pose but pointing. Um, I got into conversation with someone over Discord who agreed to draw these two costumes for $50 each and I was like, yeah, sure, that's fine. I was going to use these forever anyway. But then for some reason they were like, I'll have them done for you in two weeks for $280 total. And I was like, whoa, 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 hold on, wait, hold on. Your pricing sheet says $50 per bust and that, like at that point I was like, um... I'm just going to try to draw them myself and see how it goes. In the end, I made a whole bunch of these in a couple hours, and I liked them, and I also organized everything in a fancy little fire alpaca file. If you're curious, I would have spent $140 on this and this. Just imagine them without any shading and only from the shoulders up. Kind of crazy in my opinion, but again, I'm not familiar with commissions, and it's, it's probably normal. But yeah, first thing you need to do in an adventure game is code in the player, since everything is going to revolve around them. These costumes are temporary for me, I'll redraw them later for the final game. But right now, I have one costume for standing, three for the walk cycle, and one for jumping. You could also have poses like sitting or laying down if you want. Don't have separate costumes for scars or accessories or anything. I'll show you how to do that in a separate sprite in a different video to save you from drawing a whole bunch of costumes. I want to add a menu to this game, but I'm just focusing on the character for now, so I'll have this broadcast start that will be sent once the play button is pressed. Initialize your character by setting its position, its direction, and its costume when the game starts. Also remember to have them show. Here's the first movement script. What this does is move the character left and right whenever the arrow keys or the A and D keys are pressed. I keep this and the costume changing separate so the character can move smoothly without being choppy. Here's what we have so far. The walk cycle isn't necessary, but it does look really weird with the character sliding around like that. You're gonna need to make a variable for this. Right here, we're forcing the character to stand when the player isn't pressing any of the movement keys. Inside the if statement, you're going to want to add this. I only have three walk cycle costumes, so I make the boolean check if the variable is more than 3.9. If you have four costumes for the walk cycle instead, change the 3.9 to a 4.9, and so on. The point 3 down here is just how fast the costumes are going to change. Make this smaller to change costumes faster, or make it bigger to change them slower. After all this, we switch the costume to the floor of the variable. The walk I put before this is because in my sprites costumes, I named all the walk cycle costumes walk and then a number. If you just put floor of variable here, the costume will change to that number in the list of costumes. For example, if I wanted to switch the costume to the second walk cycle costume, if I didn't have the walk there, it would change my costume to the second costume in the list walk one, which is not the costume I want. Here's the character moving with the walk cycle now. For jumping, we have a separate loop. If you put this in with the other movement loops, you won't be able to jump and move at the same time, which is unnatural, so I keep them separate. I have this gradual Y position change to make the jumping look like gravity is working on it, but it's completely optional. We also have to go back to the costume script because right now, if you're not moving, your character will be forced to stand. So for this, if your character is above the ground Y value, instead of being forced to stand, it'll be forced to jump. This number depends on what number you put here. We also have to do something similar up here for both parts of the if-then statement. This would also be where you would switch the costume if you wanted to sit or lay down or anything extra. 
I drew a new costume for sitting. We need to add a few tiny things to make the sitting work. With a new variable for sitting, set it to zero when the game starts. To make you sit, you could either have these, or what I prefer, this system. For my game, you could sit when you press the down arrow or S. We'll set the variable to zero when you try jumping and when you try moving. Then finally, we'll add the script that says if you're sitting, the costume will change to you sitting. Otherwise, you'll switch to the standing costume. And yeah, that's all you have to do to create the playable character and allow it to move around the screen. Hopefully, I do continue making these so I could walk people through step by step on how to make their own adventure game instead of coding it and making the base for it so people are actually learning how to do it instead of like remixing and not paying attention to what exactly is going on there. So yeah, um, I'll see you in the next video, I guess.